been a player, both of these really, both Garb Odors have been a player since they were printed. On the other side, Robert Kinbrum here is playing uh, something a little bit different, but not too wacky. Yeah, uh, I actually love this because I think uh, it was, Azul like played it on like one time just on stream or something. And it is Buzzwell GX Mag Cargo. Uh, and you think, why, why are those two paired with each other? But there, there's actually a stadium card that doesn't really see play anymore. It's Scorched Earth. Being able to discard a fire or a fighting energy from your hand to draw two cards. So essentially, if his deck goes perfectly, he can always get those beast rings, always get those like max elixirs or anything he plays. I actually don't think he plays max elixirs, just four beast ring. But essentially, you control the, your draws every turn. Yeah, that was something that I think a lot of players, uh, I think when Mag Cargo was first printed, everyone said, oh, this slots into Zorak perfectly. You smooth and over. I mean, it does. So, yeah, it absolutely does. Off the top of your deck, you trade for two. But I think we've seen a, a smaller group of players say, like, you know what, actually, maybe the decks that lack a little bit of draw power could use the Mag Cargo a little bit better. You know, we, maybe we need to kind of fix our draws more. And I think, not something that's super popular, but I do think that's something that's starting to catch on now. Yeah. Uh and in combination with an Oranguru as well, uh, being able to instruct to draw until he is three, uh, if he has a low enough hand size and he needs that supporter, just, all right, I'll search my deck for a Sycamore, put it on top, and then I'll instruct to draw one card, and play that, and I'm set. All right, it looks like the prizes on Robert's side. We have a Slugma prized. Slugma, a basic fighting. Uh, it is important to note he only plays nine basic fighting here, and those are the only things he can discard. Meanwhile, we have a Trash Lance Garbodor and a Latios in the prizes. Latios is a very important card against Buzzwool GX. And it looks like these players are off now. Uh, round two action here from the World Championship. We'll I, I, I'm start. hyped. Let's yeah, get hyped. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it's like Robert's taking his first turn now. So what, what do you, how do you think this matchup plays out? You just said that the Latios was big. But how exactly do you think this is going to go? So if you think about Robert's deck, uh, it's very reminiscent of the Buzzsaw Garb deck that I think like Alex Hill, Chris Shemansky and them played in North America, where it's just like, I'm going to play four big GX and just rely on their power. You're going to knock one out and then I'm going to B-string the two guys and then just win from there. Looks like Robert does go first, plays a Cynthia as a Buzzwool GX action, just passes, no energy, nothing else on the bench, just passes with that bare Buzzwool up as we go to Patrick's turn. Uh, the whiffing the energy is kind of okay because you don't really want to just manually charge up this first Buzzwool. Uh, you're really just going to jet punch early on, especially against a Zorark deck. Uh, one of those like few turns that are pretty sweet is when you can uh, Guzma like a Trubbish and then deal some 30 to a Zorark and then or just spread your damage a little bit, take some soft knockouts. Uh, that's really his goal. Uh, yeah, you're really looking to just kind of use your first buzzwool as a way to just kind of chip away, and then once your B-string turns on is when you're going to try to go big. So missing the energy there, not the biggest deal in the world, and we see uh, Patrick on the other side does have a pretty solid classic Zorark start with a opening Zora Bridget into uh, nearly filling his bench here with two Zora and two Trubbish. Yeah, also the one Trash Lanch in the prizes as well might come into play here. Uh, just two really good attackers against Psychic Week Pokemon in his prizes. Looks like that Cynthia, or sorry, that Bridget comes down. Parallel City limiting the bench of Robert. Yeah, it was unfortunate that Robert did not get a Slugma out turn one. Uh, he does have that one prize then off of Cynthia. His hand was kind of anemic. Yeah, I think there's two Buzz in his hand. Yeah, I think there's two Buzz, two Guzma. He's going to go ahead and play the Buzz wool down. Oh, sorry, it's a Lele. Okay, Lele, Lele turns this hand back on. Definitely a lot better than the third Buzz wool. Absolutely. Looks like another Cynthia he's eyeing down. Okay, just going to go ahead and play the Cynthia, refresh his hand for six cards. So what is he trying to build to here? You know, he's, he's getting a fresh new six cards, two Buzzwall on the bench. He needs that Slugma. Is that is all he's looking for, a Slugma energy? Yeah, this is the turn where uh, not hitting the energy is bad because you get a free knockout, essentially. And being able to soften up some other guys to where if he doesn't have the evolution, you get another knockout next turn. But, oh, there's a Scorched Earth and an energy. He might have to make the tough decision of 
Is he greedy? Oh, uh, no. no. He okay. just uses statues. <laughs> that is definitely the better play. Um, I know definitely a few of my friends would be like, ah, dude, I'll draw an energy off the top. It's fine. Taking the first knockout there, deciding where to put the... He puts a 30 damage on the Trubbish. Is that, is that what you would have done? Do you think that's kind of the standard play in this matchup? Yeah, uh, just being able to deal with those Garboders. Uh, you can knock out these Zoroarks all day long, but those Garboders are really going to be the big threat here. Speaking of Zorark, we see the Zorark GX become active for Patrick, and we see a little, uh, not quite as uh, consistent maybe as the smooth over Mag Cargo, but we're seeing another combo with Zorark happen right now. Yeah, a card that kind of got replaced by Mag Cargo. Uh, Mallow, being able to search your deck for two cards, shuffle your deck, and then put them on top. Uh, just insane combo with Zorark. It actually does something that Mag Cargo can't do. Uh, you can't smooth over twice and then trade into both those cards because you shuffle your deck. Right, right. So smoother, does, even though it's a very powerful <laughs> ability, does have the downside of not being able to actually stack your deck for two cards, unlike Mallow. Looks like here Zorak DCE might be the cards of choice. Really just trying to get some stuff going, but... Um, I think that's a pretty classic uh, yeah. er, er, early Mallow or early Smooth Over is going to be one of those cards. Just Zorak lets you draw into more cards. You need DC to attack, obviously. And I'm actually going to try to uh, kind of branch off a little bit, but we were talking about, like, Buzzrock and its place against, like, Zorak and Field Blowers, all that stuff, um, and how you didn't really play two prize Pokemon until you got down to three. They got down to three prizes. Then you played your Buzzful GX, your Lycanrocks and all that. Mm -hmm. Buzzful GX is actually better positioned early game now against Zorark decks because you get those really fast knockouts, set up the damage on other bench Zoroarks and stuff to take knockouts with the regular Buzzful, and it triggers Beast Ring right away. Right, yeah, it's almost, uh, it's almost an advantage, right, having those, those numbers uh, now. So big change to the format, and we see a Riotous beating for just 80 damage after a couple of trades. How, how critical is hitting this Garboder here? Is that, is that important at all? Does he, does he care just not having a Garboder on, in play, or is he all about those Zoroarks? Uh, usually against, uh, if you see a Buzzhole deck, and you, you kind of think Buzzhole Lycanroc, uh, maybe the second bench Buzz GX kind of threw him off, like, okay, maybe his deck's a little bit different. Maybe it's Buzz Garb. I don't need the Garboder. But Garboder is actually something you really try to go for to shut off Lycanroc's ability, shut off Diancy, and cards like that. But uh, he kind of just had the right read in this matchup. Like, I don't need it. I, I'd rather have Trash Lanch. We see an end here. Uh, Robert going to go down to five prizes, or five cards in hand, rather, whereas Patrick will get six. Just both players are in their hand. We've seen uh, Robert, you know, obviously good setup, got it, got an early knockout, got buzzes, but he just hasn't really, no, no mag cargo. He's just been shuffle drawing every turn. Doesn't, you know, can't really string anything together in these early turns. Uh, yeah, and to be fair, though, he doesn't really need to. The only thing he really needs is maybe a couple energy, get some stuff going. Once this bus will gets knocked out, then that's the turn where you need everything. Yeah, that, that's the beautiful part. Like we were talking about earlier, that B-string card has just been such a been such a huge player in the format because it just lets you sit with this buzzle with one energy and just say, okay, whatever, I don't, knock it out, go ahead. And then I'm, you're going to turn on my B-string, and that's when wow. things are going to go big. This hand is actually insane from Robert right here. Uh, has the Ultra Ball. Will have to discard a B-string and a Mag Cargo, but... Being able to have that Orangaroo as well and then a strong energy to follow it up and then just instruct for three brand new cards. Looks like he's uh, giving some thought on what to discard there. Here's the Ultra. So the Ultra Ball is coming down for sure. Yeah, it's, Orangaroo hits the bench. It's definitely rough because Beast Ring is going to be live next turn if uh, Patrick gets at least a couple more Pokemon. Yeah, it looks like it's what he chooses to take actually is keep, keep the Beast Ring, get rid of the strong energy and the Mag Cargo. But now it's going to be awkward if he doesn't draw an energy off of this Instruct. Uh, he will be set back a little bit, but having that Beast Energy for next turn is very good. So Ultra Ball being played. What do you think he's going to get here? Is he just going for the Slugma to try and build up the Mech Cargo? Or it is, is he just... Uh, it, it depends how ahead. worried is he is with his hand, Slugma or Tapu Lele. He chose the Tapu Lele here, which I do like. Uh, his hand really is just that Beast Ring. So uh, if he doesn't hit anything off that Instruct, he is kind of, like, falling by the wayside a little bit. So this is the safer play. Yeah, going with the very safe play of Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag, Professor Sycamore, just say, all right, next turn, uh, I'm, I'm safe. I'm not just going to lose this game to drawing dead. 
And then this Instruct for one. If it's an energy, it's pretty good, but just a Scorched Earth off the top. Yeah, nothing to do there. We see another Jet Punch putting the damage on the Zorark GX, softening that one up. Yeah, and this is where now you want to soften up the Zorks on the bench because it allows Jet Punch to actually take just some knockouts off of Zorark instead of like having to actually knuckle impact or absorption. So it seems like Robert knows what he's doing in this matchup. I think that's something you're going to see with uh, the format having been so refined, I'll say, is that I think we're going to see everyone who's choosing to play Buzzwool or Zorark in this tournament knows exactly what they're doing against the other. And they know exactly what they're doing in the mirror as well. All right, so that trade got Floatstone and Evo Soda off the top for Patrick here. Evo Soda is a way to get that Trash Lanch Garboder in play. He also has the Psychic Energy as well, a thing that uh, I know in Stefan's list, he uh, played the Unit Energy. And we actually saw it in Juniors. Um, Benny played the Psychics, uh, getting right. second at the North American International Championships. And... It's kind of like uh, you're, you're succumbing to Enhanced Hammer a little bit. You're like, Enhanced Hammer is going to be a pretty big card. I'll play these basic psychic instead. I don't want to get cute with Cartana and stuff, even though how much I want to see it. <laughs> how much Jeremy personally wants to see it. Evo Soda for that Garbotoxin, Garboder. There's a Tapu Lele. Of course, Garbotoxin not turned on yet. Oh, and here we see an Acerola off the Tapu Lele here. Potentially saving that Zorark GX. Saving the Zorark, saving the double colorless as well. And we do see he has another Zorua to bench, meaning he does have the knockout this turn. There's the Acerola picking up yep. Zorark GX. That little one is going to be promoted. All the damage healed off. Double colorless back in hand. Going to go ahead and attach to the active... And this is going to be a knockout. Don't know what else. If he has anything to play, he can turn on Garbotoxin with the Float Stone. So no abilities. It's awkward, though. Uh, the only ability your opponent really has is that Oranguru, and you know he has a Professor Sycamore in his hand. Uh, we're going to see a very exciting turn here from Robert. Beast Ring and a Sycamore in hand. And a strong, energy, a strong energy off energy. the top as well. Man, we're going to see some fireworks. All right, so Patrick has... You know, taking two prizes, he's knocked out the Buzzwell GX, and but in a lot of ways, like you said, this just turns on Robert's game plan. Strong energy on the Buzzwell, Beast Ring, incredibly powerful item card there. I think it makes Accelerate energy onto his field. And I believe I only see maybe three or four items in Robert's discard. I don't quite have the count. I know there's the Beast Ring and the Ultra Ball at least. Like, he's just deciding what to take here. Yeah, one thing uh, with only playing these nine basic fighting energies along with that Scorched Earth combination, uh, you really kind of have to pick and choose uh, where you put these because who knows if you've gone through enough of your deck to use another B-string. Right, and he does have two Super Rods. It's kind of, I think, a concession to that, you know, saying, yeah. I need these energies back. I'm going to be discarding them. Scorched Earth although serves as a kind of a parallel city counter, too. I know stadiums are big right now. Fieldboard is that same thing, but it's kind of nice to have something that actively promotes your game plan. There are both of the Beast Ring energies right on to the Buzzle and that Professor Sycamore that we knew he had in hand. And wow, Diancie Choice Band here. Uh, that should be enough to take the knockout on the Zoroark, if I'm not mistaken, with Jet Punch. Uh, let's see. We'll do some quick math. Uh, three, six, Does eight, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Yep, that's the knockout. And like I said, that 30 damage uh, allowing you to take a knockout with Jet Punch, too. And another Beast Ring coming down. So this does up the item count now, too. So that's one thing to be a little bit worried about. Do you think that's worth it, though? Do you think you just need to take these turns where Beast Ring's turned on and play them and just not worry about the Garboder? Uh, to be honest, probably. Uh, it depends how many he had in his discard to start with, because if it was already a knockout off that Buzzwool, the then it's just useless next yeah, 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 who, who cares about that? All right, we see two more fighting energy coming down to the benched Buzzwool GX. Man, what an insane turn. This is what these Ultra Beast cards have done to the TCG. Uh, just very explosive turns here. And then we see an absorption, kind of the attack of choice uh, for Buzzwool GX. Uh, you don't want to kind of limit yourself next turn by using Knuckle Impact. Yeah, and Diancie, of course, turned off due to the Garbo Oh, that is right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
All right, full bench back on Patrick's side. Two more Zorark GX at the field. I oh. see a Psychic. Yeah, finally showing a little bit of offense, Garbodor here. But does he have the does he have the Garbodor in hand? He's just just attaching and hoping to to get it here. So he has Field Blower to Field Blower his own Floatstone, and then try to trade into some maybe. He also has that Rescue Stretcher, but I believe it's not in the discard. I know there's one prized. Kind of awkwardly having to retreat there first and kind of send up this Trubbish and then. Oh, yeah, it, it's going to be heartbreaking if he does not get it here. All right, here we go. We, we actually see it on the bottom of his deck as he's shuffling there. <laughs> four cards four cards for Patrick, looking for that big trash lanch. Garboder, let's see if he can find it. Yeah. Limiting, uh, it, it was also very important to get down the other Trubbish. Being right. able to stream those trash lanch Garboders is how you're going to beat this Buzzful GX deck. Of course, and here we see... Three cards on one side, four on another. I think that was a Slugma, Macar Mag Cargo, and then a Field Blower. We see some trades. He has an Ultra Ball, so he, he's going to find the okay. Garboder if he wants it. But we're going to trade first, just maybe we don't have to use that resource. Looks like Wow, that's no. a lot of Guzmas as well. Yeah, two Guzmas, Rescue Stretcher. Oh, sorry. I forgot to up the supporter count. It's like eight now, I think. Not exactly what he was looking for, but he will be able to find that Garboder if he wants it this turn. Just kind of need to decide... What do you want to discard is he's all out of trades. Yeah, you kind of hope that, like, okay, well, I have all these good cards. I can discard one of them. Hopefully, I'll discard two bad cards that I could just discard off this Ultra Ball. But instead, he drew more Guzmos and more cards that he needs. Yeah, and you can see he's actually ta taking a minute to think exactly what he wants to do here. Uh, puzzle, Guzma, another Psychic, Rescue, Stretcher. He, he actually needs, essentially, all of this for next turn. Right. There's nothing um, free to discard here. The, the Guzmos are kind of free to discard, but you'd be discarding all of them. Right. And if he brings up your Garboder and then starts jet punching everywhere, it's a little awkward. So yeah, Acid Spray there. Acid Spray and he misses. Man, that's rough. All right, so misses the Acid Spray. Here comes the Slugma. No Garbotoxin up. Yeah, Instruct is now Patrick. turned on if he can get his hand below three cards. Is exactly three. Ooh, reveals a psychic energy there. It's like he's just gonna. Robert kind of just thinking about what he wants to do. He has uh, kind of been deliberate with these uh, jet punch damages, is making sure he's putting in the correct place. Doesn't want to mess anything up. All right, and with that 30 on the Trubbish from before, takes the knockout with jet punch there and sets up that Zorark on the bench. All right, Trubbish comes into the active position. Here is a, another trade. Oh, second Puzzle of Time. All right, that, that turns on some major things. Puzzle of Time, of course, major player in the Zora decks. Play two, you get any two cards from your discard pile back. Not quite as, um, you know, intense in these uh, Zora decks as it is in the kind of the Zora control where you're resource yeah. managing them back every turn, but still a very, very powerful card. Yeah. And so he needs quite a few things this turn to actually start making a comeback. Uh, he needs that Trash Lanch, number one. He has the energy uh, choice band if he wants it, but those might just be discard fodder. He also could choose to Rescue Stretcher the Trubbish down to his bench, but that means he would need to get the Trash Lanch that's from the prizes or just have to save the Puzzle of Times to get the Trash Lanch back next turn. Looks like we're going to start with an Ultra Ball. Uh, Guzma goes away. He's still debating over what which other card to discard. He looks like Rescue Stretcher might hit the discard pile. Yes. It's not an easy decision either way. Oh, no. Th this turn is really tough, especially since you're staring down Robert, who just went double B-string, knock out your Zorak, knock out your Trubbish. Uh, it's pretty insane. All right, and there is the Trash Alanche Garboder hitting the field. He has a Psychic. He has the Choice Band. This, this Garboder has had quite a couple seasons. Uh, ever since this came out, it's been like up and down and uh, being played and its popularity, but it's just such a strong card. Yeah, I mean, when that card first came out, I think it was just the absolute talk of the town. I've, I've very rarely seen the early tournaments. I've, never, I've very rarely seen dominance like the early tournaments after Garboder came out. All right, so here we see double puzzle time getting Trubbish Guzma. 
Choice band coming down on the Garboder. End and end. All right. So All this right. is how he's choosing to kind of find his way back into this game. You said he needed a lot. He's now ending, ending his opponent down to two cards with Garbo Toxin up. He does have a knockout up this turn as well. So we'll go down to two prizes. So we'll be tied. And, you know, like a lot of games in this tournament, I think it's going to come down to these late game ends. Honestly, that's how the, the whole format is. is <laughs> N is the best card and the worst card in the entire Pokemon TCG. Yeah, if, you, if you want to talk about cards that have been played since the day they came out and, you know, define the format, N is definitely right up there. Oh, wow. Uh, looking at the two cards, Robert actually drew B-String, Choice Band. Uh, not pretty good cards here. And with the knockout here, he's going to have a decision to make. He can bring up that Buzzswole, but if he doesn't draw an energy, he does not have the knockout. And with Guzma back into the deck with the puzzle. Oh, oh, Sycamore off the top. All right. Two useless cards in hand. Decides to promote the Oranguru. Draws the Sycamore off the top. And maybe right Man, back Man, that Sycamore is insane. Looking at the discard pile, just kind of considering his resources here. It, it's really just, should I attach this choice band? And I think the answer is probably always yes. There's no real downside, right? All right. There is the Sycamore Field Blower. All right. Ultra Ball. He has the energy. Does he have a way to retreat? I don't think I actually did see a way to retreat the Oranguru. Again, promoted that Oranguru, kind of taking a little bit safer route there, saying I don't want to have this buzz active if things go bad. And uh, could, could we lucky. see, uh, <laughs> could he get his hand down far enough to Ultra Ball to Med Cargo? put like a float stone on top of his deck and then instruct draw it so he has six cards now and no it looks like he does at least it's not going to go he, drew, for that. he, he just passed he drew it. quite a few en number of energy here I will all right but now the question is <laughs> does patrick have guzma let's see just one more gx knockout will seal the game here for patrick there's another trash lance guard yeah we see guzma in his hand but oh he doesn't have a way to he doesn't have a way to yeah, retreat he doesn't have a way to get out and of course, oh, no, that's no trades active. He just has to play the N again. So he's saying, all right, I have no trades active. I, I can't get, get any of my Pokemon out of the active position after I Guzma, so I just have to end here. Again, kind of do what we did last turn, put you on a small amount of cards, take a knockout here, and hope for the best. And now the thing is, if Robert wants to draw his out to winning the game, Guzma, he would need to promote something else. I think it was Ultra Ball Scorched Earth off the top. No. Oh, it actually doesn't oh, take the knockout. Just, uh, they're going to double check, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, only 100 damage. 100 damage. All right. Big draw step. Strong energy. Strong energy. That's not it. I don't think he really, I mean, he has, he has Ultra Ball, but he has, he'll have no uh, abilities to use, of course. Yeah, yeah, and it says pass turn back. Losing the Oranguru as well uh, is going to be a little hard on him, too. Ooh, Field Blower from Patrick here. Looks like, yeah, he's doing the same play he did last turn where he's going to Field Blower his own uh, tool to turn on the Garbotox. And it looks like he does have Guzma double colorless now, so he can go ahead and Guzma up, retreat, knock out, and win the game. Wow. There we have it, folks. Game one in the books here. Garboder too strong for the strong Pokemon Buzzwool. Yeah, so I mean, the Buzzwool deck I think had a, had a little bit of an early misstep, but had that big B string turn, and then just immediately yeah. got Garboder and just could not keep up. All of a sudden, your guy gets knocked out, and you're sitting pretty, and your opponent goes, "I'm gonna play five energy in one turn." Yeah, exactly. It's the, the power of the Buzzwool deck, but still, just I mean, the you know, you play five energy in one turn. Well, I'm gonna play one energy onto a Garboder <laughs> that you're weak to, and take the knockout. Man, uh. That really came down to that end. It was, it was rough. Yeah, there was some stumbling on both sides there in the late game. We saw a lot of passes, uh, but I don't think there was really anything either player could have done differently. Uh, I don't think that uh, Robert could have gotten his hand down to maybe try to get out of that spot in the second to last turn, and then just you know, goose my DCE is just going to go ahead and win the game there. So what what do you think Robert has to do differently, if anything, to try to tie this series up? All right. Uh, well. McCargo would really help just being able to smooth his draws over. And uh, 
<laughs> yeah, we saw uh, Robert actually like had an opportunity to go for a Slugma early and didn't. Um, I think he was under parallel city lock at that time, so maybe that was influenced it. But do you think that was just? Do you think he was just saying, okay, I need other things now, or do you not think he cares about my cargo in this matchup as much? Or like, is, what's your impression of this? Uh, it's different because I'm not actually very familiar with this version of Buzzwool. Uh, it's really just kind of a new one that came out like in the last few weeks. And it, it seems super strong. Uh, that regular Buzzwool, the, the baby Buzzwool as people call it, uh, is actually very important in this matchup. Uh, probably his preferred attacker uh, once the first Buzzwool GX gets knocked out. So him not having that was kind of a little upsetting for him. Yeah, I'd imagine. So he is playing the four Buzzwool GX on like a lot of the kind of Buzz Rock decks, Buzz, Buzzwool Lycanroc. That play uh, one. That just play just play one and rely on the uh, non-GX Buzzwool, but... It, it, we reverse the script here. Uh, there's no Lycanroc, there's no Octillery. It is just four Buzz GX and then a regular Buzzwool as well. And I think, I think of all... I, I don't actually have the numbers, I don't have the percentages, but I think Buzzwool Lycanroc is the most popular deck in this room today. I talked to a ton of players who just said... I, I guess if you break up the Zorark decks into like separate categories, maybe? Sure, sure. I, I cer certainly Buzzwool and Zorark, just those two archetypes, are the most popular ones. I think that there's a lot of players who were not exactly confident in their ability to play the Zorark Mirror or just didn't want to play the, the long Zorark Mirrors and just said, you know, Buzzwool, just it's an easy deck to play. I mean, it, like... Uh, former senior world champions uh, Jesper Eriksson just said, <laughs> like last night, he just told me, like, oh, I, just, I don't even need to test. It's an easy deck to play. I just attack, I attach, whatever. It doesn't matter. So I think there's a lot of players who are in that just kind of buzzle is very, very inherently powerful. Yeah, and it, it's actually pretty intricate to play as well. Uh, you really do have to play that prize game with your opponent, thanks to B String and Sledgehammer. Jesper may have been speaking a little bit of hyperbole as we take a look. Two Floatstone and a prizes. Field Blower in prizes for Patrick. All right, same. Opening Pokemon as last time, Buzzwool GX and a Zorua. A little bit of a different start here for Robert as he attaches a Fighting Energy to the active, and it looks like he has some cards to play. A Ranguru hits the bench. Oh, it looks like maybe a turn one Lily. I love Lily. It's a really, really powerful card in the early turns and can also, uh, one of the supporters that can kind of get you out of those, you know, late game ends. Oh, I only have two cards, so well, I'm just going to draw a bunch off Lily. Yeah, well, especially if since he's playing a deck that doesn't rely on that turn one Bridget card, like all these Zorark decks, you kind of want a supporter. You can play turn one that doesn't really hurt you. That gives you a huge advantage. Yeah, you know, like, like, like the Bridget does for the other decks. All right, so Nestball here could be looking for that Slugma that was essentially missing almost the entire game. Yeah, Robert, we're going to take a little bit of time to look through his deck, determine what exactly is prized but I imagine it is going to find a Slugma, and it does. Slugma will, or Macargo rather, will change the uh, landscape of this game if he can stick it and the Garbotoxin is turned off. Fixing uh, your draws every turn in com combination with that Oranguru, very, very powerful. You want to know one thing I just want to see happen that it will probably never will? Partana? No. No, we've already seen that. <laughs> uh, so Slugma's first attack is one energy, ten, your opponent can't retreat. Well, if your opponent has a parallel city <laughs> and reduces the fire, you do zero. And just Ooh, chat, lock chatter yeah, lock. Chatter up. lock. Going old school. All right, we see the we do see the lily, and we see a pass of the turn. Yeah, uh, the strongest turn Robert could have probably had. Yeah, just draw a bunch of cards. I have a Buzzwool GX active with an energy. I have my two kind of combo pieces set up on the bench, and we're seeing uh, what I assume is the very classic <laughs> Zorark turn of Tapu Lele into. Uh, Wonder Tag into Bridget. Yeah, but here we actually see Latios is in the deck. So, All right, let's, uh, some fireworks here. We did not see this Latios, uh, star, uh, this Latios card last turn, last game rather. Let's talk about that. How big of an impact do you think it has on this matchup? So it's the card that people kind of choose to play over like Me Too from Evolutions, sure. or like this deck since it plays Garboder, it doesn't play Mew EX. Sure, sure. Um, but for a double colorless, it does thirty to the active and thirty to the bench. So since they're weak, it does 60-30. Well, if you have a choice band, it's 120-30. Uh, and it just builds up insane numbers and really just sets up your knockouts for the rest of the game. And it's a one-prize attacker as well. You why know. Why this over the Mewtwo then from Evolutions? Uh, I, I really think it's just better against other matchups as well. 
Just gives you a little bit more flexibility, yeah. whereas Mewtwo is more of a straight up Buzzwool counter. Like, Mewtwo doesn't even knock out Buzzwool in one hit. Right. So, since you're not doing that, might as well spread the damage as well. Might as well give yourself a little bit of a impact on the game besides just attacking Buzzwool. Oh, here we actually see a Floatstone coming down on the Zorua as well, allowing him to first turn 60-30 here. It looks like he just uh, Floatstone going to go ahead and attack here. But a thing to note, remember the two Floatstones in the prizes for Patrick. Yeah, it's going to be big as he wants those on the... Uh, Trubbishes, of course, are on Garbotoxin, but I think he just, he kind of, he's had to do it. You yeah. know, he just had to put the pressure on. We just talked about this is what Latius wants to do. So looking at Robert's hand, it is stacked. <laughs> There's a lot of energy. He has that Scorched Earth. I don't know if he has a way to get the McCargo out, though. Looks like we're going to do a Scorched Earth activation here. he's really looking for a Guzma or something of the like. Yeah, two new cards, but uh, Beast Ring Super Rod, so... Cards you don't want to see this early. Yeah, nothing really for him off the Scorched Earth. Do you see maybe a Cynthia and an N in the back of his hand? I think we see some supporters here. We also see a Buzzwool, but it's just about what he wants to do, I think, before he plays the supporter. And it looks like he's debating whether to slap another fighting energy down on that active Buzzwool. Yeah. And the, I think the biggest thing I didn't talk about Latios uh, in this matchup is since he plays Psychic Energy's Lagoon Flight with a Choice Band, just takes a knockout on anything. Yeah, it just actually gets, uh, again, like a little bit different of a, a tech other than that Mewtwo. And just, again, if he just if he says a Psychic next turn, he's just taking knockout after knockout. On Robert's side, we see a Cynthia. So six new cards. She's just not to attach, just kind of saying, okay, I want to, you know, see my options. Maybe risk not drawing an energy here, but whatever. That's yeah, he actually deal. didn't bench the Buzzwool GX in his hand either. Uh, he's really going to look for that regular Buzzwool here. Uh, it's the one card that could actually take a knockout with one energy against this Latios. And six cards. Looks like he did not find it. But he does have some options here. He does have an Ultra Ball in his hand. The Ultra Ball can find whatever Pokemon he wants. Do you, if you're going to play the Ultra Ball here, do you think you go Mag Cargo or just the Buzz? I, I would think Buzz. Um, just because your field is literally that Buzzful. You kind of need a few more attackers, but choosing to attach the energy to the active kind of forcing his opponent like, okay, well, if you have the, like, I just hope you don't have the psychic energy. And it looks like he's just, he just actually just attacks. Uh, Going to go ahead and put 30 damage on the Latios, of course, and then 30 on the benched Zoro, it looks like. Yeah, with the floatstone, uh, it matters a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you're going to put damage somewhere. You got to do it correctly and it looks like an ultra ball oh wow on patrick's side now getting rid of garbotoxin and trubbish looking for a tapu lele because his hand is nowhere to be found except he does have the psychic yeah, he, energy he has psychic guzma but he just doesn't have really any draw power and this again similar to that buzzwell is the only attacker on robert's side this latios is all patrick has yeah rescue stretcher shuffle those back good play yeah i like it more or less a free discard there, just kind of letting you discard Basically just discarding the rescue stretcher off the ultra yeah. ball instead of the Pokemon. Any any way you can really get some card advantage is the best way. A wonder tag for Cynthia, but we're going to attach a Psychic first and then play the Cynthia. So six new cards, taking a big knockout here with a uh, Pokemon that he doesn't really care about. Yeah, uh, needs, exactly. Wants to find some Zoroarks, doesn't have actually any of those yet. Uh, Garbo Garbodor, of course, but six fresh cards before we do any of that. Like, this Latios is doing exactly what Patrick wants it to do. You kind of force your opponent to play into a position where they're forced to play a bunch of items to try to get back into the game. And then when they do, you just like, oh, I got this Garboder guy. And that Zorark GX comes down, trades away a Bridget, another Zorark, another trade active. Man, what to this throw is away. a great turn here from Patrick. Yeah, I mean, he's just doing ev really everything he wants to do. Looks like he's going to go ahead and trade away that Guzma. Double colorless. And are the draws from the trade. Yep. Looking to take the knockout here. But remember, it does turn on B-String for Robert. Uh, a thing that his deck really just tries to do. 
Yeah, gonna go, debates for a little bit, plays the field blower, gets rid of the Scorched Earth. I think he's just kind of saying, all right, well, you have no attackers in play. I am turning on your Beast Ring. You know, you, you, you do have plenty of cards in hand, but let's just try and hurt you as much as possible here. Big knockout. Oranguru goes active. Getting rid of the Scorched Earth is great. Uh, it really shuts off what his deck is trying to do in the Med Cargo Scorched Earth kind of like combo. Ultra Ball coming down now. Looks like Tapu Lele will get discarded. Yeah, it looks like his hand is full of supporters here and the Beast Ring as well. Uh, he could opt to either N or Sycamore this turn. Both would be pretty beneficial, but he kind of needs a little bit more cards. Yeah, I think ending here when you're when you need cards and your opponent is ahead with two Zoraks in play is obviously fine. You still put them on less cards, but um, I think it's very very reasonable to just want to draw more cards here and kind of try to get yourself back into this game because he is behind here. The Beast Ring is turned on, which is the you know the important step in every Buzzwell game, but he does have a lot to deal with. He also could be deciding to get the Mag Cargo and put something on top of his deck and then just Sycamore into it. Yeah. But no, here we go. Sledgehammer coming down. All right, there's the Buzzwell. There's the Beast Ring. Going to attach two energy to one of his Ultra Beasts. This is going to be that Buzzwell. Look at that acceleration. Yeah, this deck not playing Max Elixir like normal Buzzwell Lycanroc decks and really just capitalizing on Beast Ring as a card. It, it looks like he's opting to play the N. Uh, he kind of like eyed it down in his hand. I mean, b b both are good options. Uh, it's just N, just playing an N into your opponent's Oryx doesn't always feel great. Hey, they can still whiff. It oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you still got to put them on your cards here. Instruct first. I do like the Instruct. You're, you're not really going to have a lower hand size after these supporters, so you want to try to get as many cards as you can. And getting that Buzzful GX is pretty good because it's another Beast Ring target. Yeah, it just draws a relevant card to play before he plays the supporter well, here. Doing a quick item count. Yeah, it looks like he's actually debating whether to play Sycamore. He, he asked uh, cards in hand and other discards being looked through, and it's not... I believe there's three or four items in the discard as well. He didn't quite catch that. We do see the end come down. Robert drawing six new cards. Patrick on just four. Yeah, and one thing to note, if you looked at that round timer, there's 12 minutes left in this match. Uh, that game one was a doozy. Yeah, so both of these players will have to, uh, well, I guess Robert mainly needs to speed up and hopefully take a game two uh, before time ends. But 12 minutes is enough time to finish this game as long as both players are aware of that. And of course, Playing at the World Championship, you're going to be aware of time. You're going to be aware of the clock. It is part of the game. All right. Again, Six he is cards. missing a way to retreat here. Yeah, Ultra Balls. Some energy, but he's already oh, used no. his Instruct. And he's, is he just passing? Is that what's happening? I'm not sure, Looking. but this is rough for him. He has not attached an energy for the turn. And he has a bunch in his hand, but the the only saving grace he could have had is if he drew a basic fighting to go along with that Scorched Earth and the Ultra Ball for the Mega Cargo to try to get that Float Stone. But right now, this Latios is going to run rampant, especially if there's a Guzma from the opponent. Yeah, kind of, I think the uh, choosing where to attach here is just saying, all right, I guess I'll just attach to this Buzzwell GX. I don't want to get completely blown out by a Guzma. He surpassed the turn. And a Guzma off the top from Patrick here. Wow. All right, we're going to do some trades first, drawing through his deck. Why not? Basically, whatever he wants. <laughs> he has double puzzle now. He has the Guzma. Pulls that to the front. Going to go ahead and Guzma. Oh, man. The big GX. He already has the float stone on the Zorar. Choice band coming down. Yep, there's the choice Lagoon band. flight. 100 damage times two. 200 damage for the knockout on that Buzzwell. That means no more beast rings. That means this regular Buzzwell is not doing 120 damage with Sledgehammer anymore. That means... That means another energy will take the knockout with Swing Around, but it's just so fragile. Well, it's really awkward here. I think one of the things that the these uh, non-EX attackers like Gladios provide is just 
the, the buzz wall really doesn't is just you don't really care about it, right? Yeah. Obviously, you've committed energy to it. You know, you committed a choice band to it, but this is not your main game plan. This is kind of the first level that the buzz wall opponents have to get through before they can actually start battling all the things on your bench. And you know, we, look, we haven't really talked about it yet, but he still can just play a Garboder. Yeah. All right, there's a knockout. Latios finally dealt with Zorg GX into and the active position. I think there's a Mallow in his hand as well. Could just Mallow for the Trash Lanch and a Psychic to take the knockout here and leave Robert with essentially nothing. Uh, all but certainly almost wrapping up this game. Yeah, no attackers on the field if this buzzwall goes down. No way to really accelerate energy. Um, just some support Pokemon that never really got there. This card file being checked, usually a good sign that your opponent has double puzzle in hand. Yeah, uh, it's always very scary when they just start looking through the discard, on, especially on your turn. They're, like, planning out their next turn. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. Oh, no, I should get this. Patrick being really careful to think about exactly what he needs to do here. A lot of resources, a lot of options. That is the s yeah, second, second trade. trade. Opts not to go the Mallow route, but does draw uh, Acerola and Enhanced Hammer as well. Oh, uh, goes to the Lost yep. Zone. Lost Zone, a mechanic that has recently been brought back with these Prism Star cards. I loved the Lost Zone when it came, uh, when it first debuted in the Pokemon TCG, and I I'm so happy it's back. We do see the Ultra Ball coming down after some consideration. Yeah, uh, opting to Patrick. discard the Mallow and the Acerola. Eyeing down that immediately trash takes the trash trash lanch garboder. He knows what he's doing. And then I think we're just gonna see a puzzle of time for psychic energy, something else, and start taking knockouts with trash lanch. There's another trubbish. That one evolves to a garboder. Looks like we need to puzzle for the energies here. It's fine. Like yeah, whatever. I mean it doesn't You're going you're down so to one ahead. prize. And Your you're, opponent. Yeah, His only way of energy acceleration is completely shut off. Yeah, puzzle for Guzma energy in particular. And there, we're going to go ahead and take out the, um, the slug slugma. Just all, right. Like, all right, I just don't want you to get back in this game. I'm going to take yeah, out... This, this buzzwall is not scary at all. Yeah, I, I can knock out the buzzwall at any time, whatever. I'm just going to make sure that you cannot claw your way back into this. One prize remaining for Patrick. Robert still has five. And it, Patrick, uh, Robert, rather, is going to need a miracle here to pull this off and tie it up. Yeah, I don't know if a miracle is going to happen today in round two. Maybe, I think miracles are saved for like round like four or five. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't use your one time on yeah, round yeah. two, you know, <laughs> when, when you're still in it. You're 1-0. But right. man, uh, we are seeing just how Latios really just changed the whole shape of the game, this game too. Yeah, I mean, you put... You know, you put the card in your deck to have these kind of hard counters against Buzzwall, and that's exactly what it did. You know, game one it was prized, but game two we saw, you know, the killer ancient from Patrick just, okay, uh, I'm going to bridge it. All right, take, immediately take the lot. He was like, knows what he's doing, knows what it's there for, and uh, it just carried him through this entire game. Having the floatstone and the double colors to start attacking, like... You, you can, it's, it's always funny commentating and watching people's body language. He just, like, confidently throws down the floatstone, retreats, slaps the double colors yeah. on. Like, he, he just knew exactly what... We knew exactly what that play meant for the game. All right, so I believe this is an Ultra Ball. Yeah, remember looking through his deck. Uh, it just, there's not really much that gets him out of this pretty tough situation. I mean, that... Yeah, and the thing about Garbiter is as the game keeps going along, he just gets more powerful and more powerful with all those items in the discard. And he does, Patrick does have that other Trubbish set up. So it's just like, okay, well, you know, you deal with this one. I can just, you know, hopefully get it back and play another one. It's not the end, even if you did get this far. Looks like maybe an N. Or no, Floatstone. Sycamore, too. Right. So. Seven new cards. Can this get him back into the game? Some energy, Beast Ring, and Cynthia. Well, with the strong energy, he will be able to take the knockout on the Garbiter without having to flip heads on Swing Around, which is always pretty nice. But again... This is your last attacker. You're, you're not going to have anything else. All right, knockout. Four prizes left for Robert. And what 
is in the hand of Patrick. Let's see some trade. First trade. Psychic Scarbutter oh, off the top. There it is, off the trade. Can't That's ride it better than that. Trash lands for the knockout. Patrick Landis in two dominating games well, advances. It's so you know, game one was kind of back and forth a little bit, but then just the end threw a wrench into things. He's like, yeah, I, I got Garbatox, and you can't really come back from this end. Okay, and then I'll fuel blower my guy and then get everything and then get Garbatox again. It, it's just